Wow, you guys made it to episode three, which is actually impressive after that rather scatterbrained episode number two. <laughs> so thank you guys for sticking along this far. I think you guys are doing well, and pretty soon we're gonna get hands on, but there's a couple more concept things I want to cover just so we can kind of set that foundation so when we start coding things, everything makes good quality sense. All right, so a couple things. When we're working with an Android device, there's a couple of terms or vocabulary that you should know. Um, so you have a bunch of application options. So each one of these is an app and each page on this application is known as an activity. So when you open an application, you have the, the main activity. And this is interesting. Uh, I like that they used this word. So the main activity. So if you watched my Java programming series or you have some history of programming experience, you might know that oftentimes for programming languages, the, the application will start in what's known as the, the main function or the main method. So main is a common thing in software development. Whenever you see main, think of it as the start. So in other words, the main activity is kind of like your home page for your app. Then on that home page, you can have different buttons that will actually open up a new activity. So you can basically think of an application as a series of pages and you can display different pages depending on, on what you want to do. Now, a, th a key thing with these applications is that you can op open the application to a specific activity based on how the application was opened. So for example, you might send the person's phone a notification and say, hey, huh, Sally commented on your photo. And then they click that and it doesn't go to the main activity, instead it goes to the activity for that photo. So it can, it can change which activity is opened to based on how you open the application. You can also have it be open from other applications, which will allow you to, to go from one app to another to a specific activity. So that's one really cool capability of these applications. Now, another thing is that there is a level of dynamicness that is made possible when you're developing Android applications. So, for example, you might have an Android device that is this big, and I might have an Android device that's bigger. And you can, I, I'm having the bad habit of, I'm looking at the, the screen here instead of, all right, I gotta look at the, okay. So you could have one that's bigger and you can make the app dynamically resize to fit the, the larger phone. Also, different phones are gonna have different hardware capabilities or different uh, features based on what model of phone they are or which manufacturer. Android is really challenging in understanding all this because so many different phones have Android. It's not like Apple where you just have the Apple phones that has iOS, so all you have to worry about is the iPhone, the different years or the models of the iPhone, and then the tab, the I, uh, pff, iPad, and then that's it. Instead, you have to worry about all the different phones that have Android, which there are tons of them. So all different sizes and all different capabilities. So you need to be able to create applications that are dynamic that are going to work on all of these devices. So a couple ways you can do this is one, design your user interfaces to be dynamic so that the, that way they work on these different sizes of devices and test it out. You can get emulators for all the, the different devices you're going to need to create for. Check them, make sure everything looks good, play with them and so forth. The other thing is that you can check different hardware capabilities. So for example, the app might require the access to the camera. And if, if for some reason a phone doesn't have the hardware camera, then you can make it so that the app cannot be downloaded. These are the kinds of capabilities that are made possible. You can basically check the hardware capabilities and you can either make it so that they can't use the app if they don't have it, or you can disable a particular feature. You know, maybe the camera is optional and since they don't have one, we'll just turn that feature off and we'll just not use the camera. So I guess it depends on, on what specifics you need 
uh, what you want to do, but that's the kind of stuff we're going to get into. Now there's one last keyword I want to teach you guys, and we're going to get into this in a dedicated video. But when I first started, this is a word that tripped me up so many times, and I want you guys to just see it so it's in the front of your brain, or at least in the back of your brain, deep back in there, like back with like the math you learned in school. Put this word there at least, but hopefully it's up front because you're going to see it again. And basically, I want you to think of an intent as a way to do various different things inside of Android development. So we're going to get into all the different things it can do, but for now, just know that this word exists and I'm gonna give you one example of something you can do with an intent. Let's say you have an activity, such as the main activity, and then you have another activity that is opened when you click this button. So you click the button and a new page is opened with all new different options and buttons and so forth. Well, you can basically transfer data from this activity to this activity using an intent. So it's a way you can transfer data between activities. So that's one of the things an intent can be used for, but there are a lot of different other things. So the easiest way to learn this is through examples. So we'll be going over lots of examples. So that's all I wanted to talk about in this episode. We talked about three things, activities, including the main activity. We talked about the dynamicness of Android development, and we talked a little bit on intents just to get that in your brain because we're going to be seeing that and I don't want it to be brand fresh, brand new, fresh when you first see it and start using it. I want you to have a little bit of knowledge. So if you want a little bit of extra research practice, look up intents in Android, read upon them, see what they can do, and, and you'll realize that they're quite versatile and you'll probably be using them a lot. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it. The only thing is, in order to view number four, you have to subscribe to the channel. It's the new rules on YouTube, that's how it works. I'm just playing. But I would really appreciate it if you subscribed and helped this channel grow. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Also consider supporting me on Patreon. Peace out and check out the next episode where I'm gonna give you some more highly useful and entertaining information. And pretty soon we're gonna be making like, I don't know, probably the next Flappy Bird. We're gonna be like big shots. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.